So my next guest tonight is a Grammy award-winning DJ, songwriter, and producers whose hits include Uptown Funk, Rehab, and Shallow. Please welcome Mark Ronson. <laughs> Now you you have worked with with uh, oh you work with everybody okay yeah just to for the people out there who don't know Bruno Mars Lady Gaga Amy Winehouse Paul McCartney Ghostface Killa scores of others yeah but I just learned your first gig in the music industry was an intern at Rolling Stone yes and tell the people how old you were I was twelve um, <laughs> well I was I was such a big a music nerd growing up and I would read Billboard and liner notes like from the age of eight and my, my dad was a musician. Jan Wenner who had Rolling Stone used to come over to the house and I would just pester him incessantly and be like, all right, I get it. Like, I'll give you a job. You can come work at the magazine. And uh, so I went and uh, I was a 12 year old whose voice hadn't broken, manning the phones and... Here, the same, you're having your bar mitzvah the same time you're a 12 year old intern right there. I would, I would... The theme is music. Yeah, yes. I, I would uh, I would take a break and they would let me go study my Huff Torah portion like it's like five. I'd, I mean I can't even believe they let me do. It. I mean, it was this big, uh, but yeah they did, and I think I just had such a lust for music and knowledge, and they just tolerated me. Well, what did, what what were you do, like? What was a twelve year old intern doing? Okay, well uh, one of the things that I had to do was uh, back then they would get their chart by calling all these mom and pop stores. So I'd be like, "Hi, I'm calling from Rolling Stone magazine. I'm like, can, can I have your top ten? And then I would figure out what the number one album was, and then I would go down to the art department, tell them, and so they could put a picture. And uh, wait, you were determining <laughs> what the number one album in America was at age twelve? No, like what, what years are we talking about here? This is whose yeah. careers did you crush? <laughs> Basically, um, it was it was that year. It was the Batman soundtrack, the Prince soundtrack to Batman. Oh, was, was oh, number Batman! One. Yeah, yeah. So like, I went downstairs to the art department. They're like, "Go tell Kim that Batman's number one." And I had never been to the art department, so here I'm a 12 year old kid, and I go down. And I'm like, "Where's Kim?" And they're like, "She's over there." And I'm like, "Batman's number one." And she's like, "Is this a prank from upstairs? Like, this a kid just comes up to me and tell like, I'm sure you love Superman too, like." What? like um, well, you made a name for yourself in the, in the 90s uh, as a DJ here in New York. Yes, yes. Um, how did you find your calling as a DJ? What got you started with that? Uh, well, I used to play in bands, and I played in, like, high school bands, but then I really fell in love with hip-hop, and I didn't know how to rap, and I was like, okay, this will be my, th my thing. Like, this is my way in. And also, I had a best friend who was really good at instruments, so mm -hmm. I was like, I'll never be as good as him, so let me find something else to do. <laughs> so, uh, so, and I started DJing. I started DJing in clubs, in hip-hop clubs in New York. Well, um, in my business, like if somebody calls himself a producer, if that's right, it can mean a lot of different things. Yeah. I don't always know what DJ means. Like, okay. what is the job of a DJ as you see it? Okay, well, like, I guess the really broad strokes would be that, like, you know, he, he's playing the music. It could be in a club, a wedding, whatever mm -hmm. it is. And, and obviously, like, DJing now becoming such a big thing with EDM, you've got these guys, like, pushing buttons in these crazy, like, Vegas clubs for 10,000 people. But, uh, but it's more it just, than just rolling in the music. You're manipulating it, you, right? Yeah, like, well, I came in an era where, like, you had turntables and you had to be able to, like, scratch, like, jigga jigga and cut and blend and mix. Like, you had, there was a certain basic skill level. It's gone a little bit out the window, but, but I still, uh, I, st I still enjoy, like, coming from that thing. Like, Grandmaster Flash, these, like, sure. kind of guys who laid the, the foundation. That's the gentlest possible way to say, in my day, <laughs> DJs were DJs. <laughs> These kids today with their buttons and I, their pushes and their I, iTunes. You're right. I didn't want to be that, but and you're... And their Zunes. Yeah, it's... <laughs> my profession is now a joke. No, that's, no, 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 that's not at all. Now, no, it is. the new album you got here... Yeah. Late Night Feelings mm -hmm. comes out next Friday. Yeah. Um, you call it a collection of sad bangers. Yes. What's a sad... <laughs> What's a sad banger? It's a song that makes you dance and cry at the same time. <laughs> you know, like, it's like you can dance, you have a good time, but it's a little emo and melancholy, so I... I, I do not know that, but... <laughs> I look forward to knowing that when, when, when you do a song for us in just a moment here. What, 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 yes. what, are, you guys, what are you guys gonna do? I'm, we're gonna do, with Leaky Lee, we're gonna do the title track from the album. It's called Late Night Feelings, and I can't wait. Well, thank you for being thank here. So much. Thank you. I can't get rid of it.
We'll be right back with a performance by Mark Ronson and Leaky Lee. Stick around.